good evening, good afternoon, or good morning. What I'd like to do today is to talk about how the solar system formed. Now, I'm sure you all know what the solar system is, but in case there might be some of you who don't, the solar system is basically the system that's attached to our sun. Our sun has eight planets around it. Those planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now some of you may be saying, wait a second, I always thought there were nine planets and um, for about the last uh, 75 years there were nine planets but one planet was recently demoted. I will talk about the demise of Pluto as a planet. Pluto is still out there, don't worry, it's out there about two billion miles from the Sun going around and around but it's no longer classified a planet and you will see there's a very good reason for that. And that brings me to, as I was thinking about that, I, I wanted to say something about, um, before you can appreciate why Pluto is no longer a planet, you sort of have to understand how the solar system came to be. Now, the gravity is sort of the pervasive force at the scales we're talking about, where we're talking about billions of miles and large type of systems such as the solar system. So how did the solar system originally form? Well, the prevailing theory is that it formed from a gas cloud, a cloud comprised mainly of hydrogen. And over time, that gas cloud began to uh, naturally accrete. It began to condense. Uh, through the force of gravity, particles attracted each other and finally they began to form uh, molecules and molecules met other molecules and they formed clusters of molecules. The clusters of molecules exerted gravitational force. They collected more things that came in the nearest vicinity so the cluster became maybe little flecks of dust, little flecks of dust accreted and it became more and more um, material-like. Now some of the stuff can never actually accrete into what we call a solid. In fact, most of the cloud is made up of hydrogen. And most of the solar system and most of the universe, in fact, is made out of hydrogen. It's the most common element in the universe. But what happened was that this cloud condensed. And as it condensed, um, in the center, you know, things kind of came towards the center, the sun started to form. Now you may ask, well, why didn't everything kind of just fall into the center? Why are there planets in the first place? Uh, and that's really a, a good question, and it, it goes takes a little bit of insight to appreciate what happened there. And basically, there's a very important law in physics called conservation of angular momentum. There are other important conservation laws, but when we think about the formation of the um, solar system, or of, of the galaxies, or other things, uh, one thing you notice in a large mechanical type of system like the like uh, the solar system or star system, conservation uh, of angular momentum has got to occur. In other words, if that initial cloud that was forming had some angular momentum associated with it, what is angular momentum? That's basically a spin. There's some kind of spin that it had, and spin can't go really go away. You, you can't eliminate spin, and you can, many ways you can demonstrate that. I won't go into the ice skater pirouetting around, and when the ice skater folds their arms, they spin faster to conserve angular momentum. That's sort of another physics lesson. I won't go into that. But the point here is that um, the cloud had to preserve its angular momentum as it um, began to condense. So as it condensed, the, most of it fell to the center, and that became a big hydrogen cloud. And that hydrogen cloud eventually got denser and denser. It became so dense that at the center, uh, it got hotter and hotter. And as it got hotter and hotter, it eventually became hot enough to start to glow. And that glow is actually um, a uh, nuclear process called hydrogen fusion. And that, that is occurring very well today. And outside of, of uh, that that sun, 
but the sun has a spin. But also, there were some bodies that started to accrete outside of the sun, and those are the planets that we have today. We have the nearby ones, which are the terrestrial planets, and further out we have a group called the um, Jovian planets. The terrestrial planets, being near the sun, are basically rocky. The reason they're mainly rocky is because the hydrogen that was associated with it and the lighter materials such as methane and water, which is hydrogen, H2O, was kind of pushed away from the sun because the sun is hot. So those things got, those light gases kind of got pushed away, but they started to condense around some of the big planets further out from the sun. And you can imagine a, a, like an imaginary thing called a frost line between, say, the orbit of Mars and the orbit of Jupiter. Well, eventually, these things out there, the clouds started to form, and so you get these big Jovian planets. And so they're spinning. And another thing that to think about is, if you were to see the solar system from far away, it would really look like a platter. And in that center of the platter, there's one little bright light, and that's the sun. Then there's little uh, planets circling around it. And the important thing is they're all in that same plane, all in one plane. You don't have a planet kind of orbiting this way and a planet orbiting this way and this way. All the planets kind of orbit in the same plane. The reason for that is because of the law of uh, conservation of angular momentum. One can go into the dynamics and you can actually show that if something condenses, it will condense into a disk to preserve angular momentum. So that's the basic point of today. The solar system formed from a cloud. That cloud was spinning. And because of that spin, not everything fell into the sun. And it just a giant, giant, giant super sun formed. A sun formed, but a lot of stuff from the outside accreted. But it had to maintain a spin. Therefore, we have the planets. And the planets rotate around the sun. There's some angular momentum associated with that. And they also spin around their axis. So that's basically it today. I hope this provided some useful insight. And um, any comments are appreciated. And thank you for listening. Goodbye.